Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista. I have a whole bunch of activities planned to do with you today. It is probably going to end up actually being a two-part video. Um, and by two parts, I just mean like two different days. I just mean two different days in the sense that um, we are going to be making some special things out of this cookbook. This is my absolute favorite sourdough cooking book. This book literally has taught me how to make sourdough. I cannot recommend it enough to you guys. Out of this cookbook, we are going to be making a ciabatta or a ciabatta. I'm not pronouncing that right at all and I'm probably butchering it. It looks like this, or ours are gonna attempt to look like that. And then we are also going to attempt to make a raspberry ginger snap twist. I'm hesitant to show you the picture because I don't know if mine's gonna turn out, but look at that. It looks delicious. So in order for us to make the ginger snap twist, I actually need to make ginger snap. Because we are in the pantry challenge, I can't just go out and buy ginger snaps. And I have a really, really good recipe for that. So we are gonna get started on the ginger snaps today. We are also going to get started on the dough today. Because these are sourdough that we're making, we actually have to let that dough ferment overnight. So I wanna get kind of started on that tonight or today. So what we'll do first, because I have a very, very active starter that I actually have to use right now. I just made, or I just started a regular loaf of just regular, like everyday sourdough bread. But I wanna still use this up so that we can feed it so that we can make the raspberry twist. But I wanna make this ciabatta because tomorrow morning for breakfast, I wanna make like a sheet pan egg and then put that sheet pan egg on the ciabatta and kind of have like an egg sandwich for breakfast. I thought that would be really yummy. So we're gonna get this started right now. It calls for 100 grams of starter, so I know that we have that already in here. And I actually need to get some water warmed up because we need 400 grams of water um, to get this bread started. It's got a little bit more water than the typical sourdough. So let me just get um, my measuring cup filled up with some filtered water. Okay, I just have that water heating up a bit. I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. So I thought once the ciabatta, and again, I do apologize if I am absolutely butchering that name. Um, once that is kind of made, we're gonna let it do its rise. You actually have to mix it twice, it says. So we're gonna do that, and then while that is doing its first rise, we are gonna get started on the ginger snap recipe. Let's just get this out of the microwave first. I think I've actually already done a video with you guys making the ginger snap, so I do apologize if it is a repeat, um, but it is such a good, good recipe. And I don't know where I got that ginger snap recipe from, so I will print it out for you guys in the description so that if you wanna give this a try, you can definitely do that. I'm gonna bring you guys down so you can actually see what I'm doing. So you'll notice that I am using a stainless steel bowl. Again, that is not recommended for making sourdough, but the reason we are using it is because this recipe actually requires us to use the stand mixer. So we are going to just use this just for the first part, and then when it comes to doing like our official like first bulk rise, we're gonna switch it out to a ceramic bowl. So to our bowl, we're gonna add 400 grams of warm water. And then we're gonna clear this, and then we're gonna add 100 grams of a bubbly active starter. Scale's not clearing, there we go. Okay, perfect, and it leaves us with just a little bit in there, which is perfect to do another feeding. Okay, so we're gonna clear this, and then it also says to add the flour, which is really weird because normally when I make sourdough, I always do a mix at this point, but it doesn't say that. It just says to add the flour and the salt into here. So this recipe says to use 250 grams of bread flour and 250 grams of all-purpose flour. I use this Central Millings flour from um, Azure Standard, and it really is what I use for my bread flour. I don't like, use a specialized bread flour. 
So I'm going to measure out 500 grams of it because it says 250 bread flour, 250 all purpose. Again, I just substitute bread flour for this. It's really an all purpose flour. And then we need to add nine grams of sea salt to this. And it says fine sea salt. I'm just gonna use my Redmond's real salt to this. Just do nine grams. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we are gonna take this over to our mixer. Actually, I'm gonna bring the mixer over here. I have um, yogurt in my Instant Pot right now, so I, there's not a lot of room on that counter for there. So we just have our paddle attachment on this. We're just gonna put our bowl in here, and then it just says mix on low speed to combine. Hey guys, you know what? I don't have my apron on. I need to get that on. The dough will be shaggy and sticky, so scrape down the sides as needed. Noticing that there is definitely some dough stuck to the sides, so we will scrape it down so that everything gets well mixed in. So now it's all mixed together. See how shaggy that is. But it's definitely very, very wet dough. And it does actually specify that this style of bread is a very, very sticky dough. So you don't want to add more flour, you want it to be this sticky. So what we need to do now is we need to cover this with a damp towel and we need to let it rest for one hour. And then we have to come back and we actually have to use the mixer again. And we've got to mix this for 13 minutes. So I'm going to get a towel on it. and We're going to let it rest for an hour. Just have a damp towel here. I'm just going to put it on my stove top for the hour. So what we can do while this is doing its little rise, well, it's doing its kind of its first rest, we will get those ginger snap cookies started. So I got my starter all fed, just gonna get it marked. And then that way it should be good and fed for tonight when we need to make that um, sweet dough. The recipe actually refers to that particular sourdough as like a sweet dough sourdough. So we need to get this good and active because we'll need 100 grams of this tonight. I just put it on my stove top because that is the most active hot spot right now because I just actually made, I'll show you guys. I just made a loaf of pumpernickel bread. Now the rye flour that I was actually using, it was not, it was labeled a dark rye, but it wasn't really a dark rye more like a light rye. So I don't think this got as brown as it should have. And it is very, very typical of the pumpernickel to burn on the top because this actually has molasses in it. So I'm so excited to try this tonight. Um, it's the first time making a pumpernickel bread. So if it works out well, I'm gonna order a lot of rye flour because we are really enjoying the rye. I made a loaf of just regular light rye bread and it was really, really good. For the ginger snap cookies, we need to get three fourths cup of melted butter. So I've just got a stick here of butter and then I am going to, make sure the package isn't on it still, then I'm gonna measure out a quarter cup here. And then we will get this in the microwave and get this melted. Put it in for about 30 seconds. One thing that I like to do when starting a recipe is I like to get all my ingredients out in front of me. It kind of helps me know what I need and I'm not stopping in the middle of the recipe because everything is out in front of me. So I just have to grab out of my spice cabinet, I have to get cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. I really have to reorganize the bottom part of my spice drawer because you know what? I think I'm actually going to see if Steven can build me like a kind of a step up for these little jars. This is what I keep all of my spices in. And if you just noticed that when I was trying to get it out, they all fall on me every time I try to get something out from the back. And I have a lot <laughs> because I make everything from scratch. So I need to have a lot of different spices. So I'm going to actually see if Steven can maybe design like a like a step, kind of like this. I have one already in here. It's like one of these removable spice things, but they're not, because I use those special um, ball jars, they're not wide enough. And so they, the, 
jars always tip off. Anyways, I'm gonna ask him. I'm sure he'll love me asking him to do another project. <laughs> So I have to use my hand mixer for this because um, our bread is in my mixing bowl for my stand mixer. So we've got the butter all melted here. Hopefully it's not too hot. So we're gonna pour it into this bowl and then we're gonna add one cup of sugar. I am just using a organic uh, cane sugar. Guys, I just spent the last five minutes looking for this. I did a kitchen reorganization and put everything in different spots because I wanted to be more efficient and organized. And I can't, could not remember where I put my sifter because I don't use it very much. I put it kind of in an area that of stuff that doesn't get used very much. And because of that, I forgot where I put it. So we found it. Let's get started on making this dough. Uh, you know what, we probably should preheat the oven also. We've got it preheated to 350. So we're gonna put three fourths cup of melted butter in this. I am just using a salted butter. I don't have, I don't really buy unsalted butter. I, I just, I don't know, I don't mind the extra salt, I guess. And then we need to put one cup of the sugar in here. The other thing that I also do when I'm baking is I'm always putting away whatever I just used. I put it away so that I know I already have it in my bowl. Let's get this creamed together. And then we need to get one egg in here, but we need to uh, beat it up first. picked my smallest bowl possible and largest egg. Try not to spill it everywhere. Okay, so we'll add that to that. And then we need three tablespoons of molasses. I'm just using a molasses that I purchased from um, Azure Standard. I bought it in bulk. It's just a really yummy organic one. Then we'll just quickly stir this together. And then in a separate bowl, we are going to sift together all of our other ingredients. The actual words I had written down were about. <laughs> so I can't remember if it takes more or less, but pretty sure I just usually follow the two cups. And then we need a teaspoon and a half of baking soda. And then we need one teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we need half a teaspoon of ginger and half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Oh, it smells amazing. Now we're gonna just sift this together. Now it just says to add to this mixture and just beat it together until it's all creamed together. This is the bowl that we just used for that flour mixture. I'm just gonna add some sugar into this. It's probably way too much. Now what we need to do is we need to take this dough and then it says to shape them into small balls and then roll it into the sugar and then put on a cookie sheet and bake for 10 to 12 minutes. So we'll get that all started. have our tray right here. I'm gonna get them put in the oven. What does the recipe say? For 10 to 12 minutes. So we'll go the 12 minutes because I know that that's about what they take. We will set a timer. I have about another full cookie sheet of dough in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just looking at the recipe right now and it only calls for a quarter cup of ginger snaps. My thought is to take a cookie sheet roll out the doughs, roll them in sugar, and then flash freeze them. That tray I know that's in the, the oven right now, that tray is going to be, it's just like, it, it will be enough ginger snaps for our recipe. 
And I would love to be able to have the option just to take them out of the freezer and thaw them and then quickly bake them. So I think that's what we'll do is we'll make a batch for the freezer. Okay, let's go and get these into the freezer and get them to do their flash freezing. And then once they are completely frozen, what we'll do is we will just individually put them into a Ziploc baggie or we may potentially even vacuum seal them. All right, our timer went off. Let's check these cookies. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, let's put them in for about another, we'll say three minutes. They don't look like they actually need very much. What we're going to do though, well, the extra three minutes is this is now at its um, hour long rest. So we are going to put this on the stand mixer. So we need to beat this for, it says 13 minutes, I think. Let's double check the recipe. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it says beat it on medium speed for 10 to 13 minutes. Um, and then it says the dough is still gonna be sticky, so we will get this going while that is doing its thing. I turned the mixer off for a minute so that you guys would be able to hear me. We're gonna take these out in the three minutes. They smell like Christmas. <laughs> Whenever I think of ginger snap cookies, I always think of Christmas time. So we're going to get these onto a cooling rack, cool down. Again, we only need like a quarter cup of these for the recipe, so we will have some of these to enjoy. Ginger snaps are so delicious, crumbled up on top of like a um, vanilla cream ice cream or like vanilla yogurt. They just go well with a lot of stuff. I'm gonna try to resist the temptation of eating these before they're cooled down. So we're gonna finish mixing that. That needs 13 minutes and then we will come back because it has to go into a bowl and do another 30 minute rise. You have to do four sets of stretch and folds with this. This bread is kind of a little bit of a, an elaborate sourdough. It's more needy sourdough, but I don't mind. I'm super excited to make it because this is actually one of Steven's favorite types of breads. So if I can master this, It'll be awesome. Okay, so let's get that finished mixing up. All right, my mixer is literally on fire right now. It is not like in being working that much. My mixture is fairly old, so it's the motor is not the best. But you guys see how sticky this dough is? That's what it says it should be like. So we're just gonna take it out and then we are going to put it into a, another bowl gonna have to clean my mixer it got like everywhere okay I realized that I was supposed to actually oil this bowl so we're just gonna take this insanely sticky dough and put a little bit of oil on the bottom it wants to stick to everything it touches. I'm trying to just get the whole bowl, bowl oiled. It'd be easier to put up my hands and do it. There we go. Okay, so oil the bowl first before you guys put it in here. And now we're gonna take that wet towel and we're gonna cover it and we're leaving it for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we have to come and start some stretch and folds and I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, and then we have to do those four times. Time for us to do our first stretch and fold on this guy. So we are going to take this side, stretch it and fold it over, turn the bowl, stretch it, fold it in. Turn the bowl, fold it in, fold 
it in. So that is the first stretch and fold. So I am gonna come back and do this, how many more times? I am going to do probably four more sets. So I'm going to wait 30 minutes in between each set, come back, do that. And then once we are done that, then I just cover it up with the wet towel and I leave it sit for about 10 hours. So we're gonna get this done in the morning. Okay, I just checked and it is starting to go down, so we can use it now. My house is so cold. Guys, it was 75 on Wednesday, and today when I went out to go and collect the chicken eggs, it was snowing <laughs> and 30 something outside. Horrible weather shifting right now. February and March here are like, definitely, can get you sick real quick. So that is finally risen. My house has allowed it to rise. I have measured out in here 160 grams of whole milk, um, which is two thirds cup. It should be two thirds cup, that's what it says. But I just measured it out. And then I have here 28 grams of butter. So I am just going to melt these together and we just have to let this sit for a minute because you gotta warm the milk up, but you can't put the, really warm milk in with the sourdough because otherwise it's just gonna kill the sourdough. So you need to kind of warm it up and then let it cool down a bit. So we're gonna do that right now. We got it nice and cooled down. So we're gonna add it to our stand mixer bowl. Then we're gonna add one large egg. Whoopsie. Try not to get any shells in there. That's weird. Look at that guys, I cracked it and this is like it's inside thing. Never had that happen before. And then we need to add 100 grams of our starter. So I have it at zero. And then what do we need for sugar? We need 24 grams of sugar. So we're going to clear this. Okay, well, I have a little bit of a fiasco going on with supper right now. So we were not supposed to add the milk to this bowl. We were supposed to actually mix the sugar and the starter and the egg together and then slowly add the milk. So it's all together now. So there's no slowly adding it. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna put it on the mixer and then we're gonna turn it on with the paddle attachment. Scraping the sides down. And then it says that we need to cover with a damp towel for 30 minutes. And we have to keep it in this bowl because we are gonna bring it back and then we're gonna need it more in this bowl. I don't know if you can see, that's what the dough looks like. It's really rough, like wet, shaggy dough. Okay, we are on the home stretch of the day. So we have our mixture now and I have put the dough hook on my stand mixer and what we need to do with this dough is we need to mix it on medium low speed for about eight minutes until the dough is soft and it starts to pull away it does also mention that if it is too sticky you can actually add a little bit more all-purpose flour to this while that is mixing i am just going to put some oil in this bowl it actually recommends to oil the bowl so we will do it this time before we actually put the dough in <laughs> So the dough is all done mixing for the eight minutes. Again, it's a very sticky dough. So we're just gonna take it out of here. And then we're gonna put it in this oiled bowl. I'm just gonna kind of shape it into a ball. This recipe does not require any stretching and folding. It does not even hint to it at all in the recipe. So all it says is just to put it in the bowl and cover it with a damp tea towel and let it ferment for 
eight to 10 hours. So we were just going to leave it on the counter for that time. So we're just gonna cover it with the damp towel right here. Got everything ready for tonight to do all of their fermenting. And I will see you guys back tomorrow morning when it's time to cook it all up or bake it all up actually. See you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, good morning. It's the next day and we are going to finish our bread projects. So I think what I wanna do first is finish the ciabatta or ciabatta, however you say it, bread, um, because that is the one that we actually got done first yesterday. So this is the bread. It is risen quite a bit, and I don't know if you can see, it's super jiggly. So what we need to do with this bread is we just need to lay it out and shape it into a rectangle. And we also need to get a uh, sheet pan. I'm gonna actually put parchment paper in this and not my silicone mat. Um, we need to get this lined with some flour and it says to dust it heavily with flour. We're gonna get this surface floured really good because we're gonna put the bread down on here. And it says to fold the dough in half, creating a rectangle. And then we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. It also says to be careful not to deflate these air bubbles. No, if you can see them, but we have one big one there and one there. So we just have to let this rest for 10 minutes and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna divide this. Depending on the size of bread that you want, it says you can divide it into two or three. I think we'll divide it into twos. Okay, we've let it rest, so we're gonna divide it into two loaves, I think that should be good. And then it says after you've divided it that you need to transfer it to this sheet of paper and dimple the dough a couple of times with your fingerprints. Oh, these aren't really, I'm looking for like the more, I should have cut it that way and not down the middle. Oh well. I'm just gonna kind of shape it a little bit. This is not in the recipe to do this. I'm just doing this because this is just, I cut it the wrong way. We're gonna put it on the sheet. And I don't know what it means by dimpling it. So by dimpling it, I, I wonder if it just means to do this. and let it rest for one hour. It says it's not gonna double in size or get puffy. We're gonna get started with our other fun loaf, the one that I'm actually really, really looking forward to. So this one we have to remove the dough onto a slightly oiled surface. So I'm just putting a little bit of avocado oil on my counter. This one, it actually says we need to let, let it rest for 10 minutes. So again, we'll let this one rest. <laughs> While that dough is resting, I am going to get our ginger snaps that we made yesterday. So delicious, I had a couple yesterday. I'm gonna get them crushed up and I'm also going to cut a little bit of these um, chocolate chips. They're kind of big chocolate chips and this recipe calls for mini chocolate chips. So I'm just gonna break these into some smaller pieces. So we need about a quarter cup. Now, these did not like turn rock hard because we took them out of the oven um, before they got to the rock hard stage. So they're a little bit more soft, but that's okay. We'll just cut them up instead of crumbling them. That's probably 
probably about a quarter cup, but we'll just cut the rest of these cookies up. And it just says a handful of the chocolate chips. If you have mini chocolate chips, you obviously, you don't need to do this. So. I'm not using the best cutting board, which is probably making this worse. Let's see if we can switch out. Okay, we'll try this cutting board. About as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> we'll get these in the bowl. Okay, we get to do the fun part now. So I have a rolling pin here and I'm just going to flour it with a little bit of this white rice flour and we are just going to roll this out. It says into a 15 by 10 inch uh, rectangle. So we want to spread about two tablespoons of raspberry jam across this and it says leaving a half inch border. So this is just some homemade raspberry jam that we made last year. It says using a back, the back of a spoon or a spatula, just spread it out thin. And this is actually a low sugar raspberry jam that I'm using. We're going to sprinkle the ginger snaps on it, chocolate chips, and then about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I have a cookie sheet here lined with a silicone mat. And what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take this and we are just going to roll it, creating a tight roll. It's kind of exactly like you would do a cinnamon roll. And then it says you want to curl the ends underneath each other. We have our sheet pan right here and we are just going to transfer it there with the seam side down. It says the dough will uh, stretch slightly. So we need to cover this for about 30, to, 30 minutes to one hour with a damp tea towel. We'll let this one rest for 30 minutes. So I think what we're gonna do right now is we're actually gonna get the oven preheated for our ciabatta bread because it needs to be preheated at 500 degrees. The other thing that it says to do is take a nine by 13 Pyrex dish. I don't, my nine by 13 is dirty in my fridge right now with casserole in it. Um, so it says to put it on this rack. And we're actually, when we go to put the ciabatta bread in, we are actually going to add about a cup of boiling water to this. And what that's going to do is it's just gonna create steam in our oven. So we're just, it says to put it in while you're preheating it. So we'll just get that nice and hot. Now I'm thinking we're gonna add boiling water because I don't wanna add cold water to a hot pan. That's gonna make my Pyrex dish break. So we are going to get some water boiling also so that we can add one cup to there. We're finally at a stage where one of these things are going in the oven. It says with lightly floured hands to try to flip this over so that the dimples are facing down. So let's try to do this. Gently. This is gonna be interesting, guys. This dough, I probably should have done it in three pieces and not two, like it's, whatever. This is the first time. I'm just choosing to do it on camera. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Okay, I have some boiling water here and the oven is preheated to 500 degrees. So I'm just gonna pour about a cup of water into this bottom pirate dish. Hope it does not break the pirate dish. Which it 
just broke it. Okay, so it did explode, which I pretty much knew it was going to by doing those two actions. So we're gonna try to use, which I should have done in the first place. Hopefully this works. Really ideally, you know what? I do have a cast iron. Let me use that. All right, we're now waiting for the oven to preheat again. So let's deal with this um, because this has to rise for another hour after we grate it. So it says that we need to cut down the center of this, leaving one inch at the bottom. Actually, it says half an inch. And then we need to crisscross the dough. just bring it oh, try to keep it together bring it over oh no it's all coming out it's all coming out it's so stretchy kind of got it a little you know it's not how it looks it's how it tastes right <laughs> Okay, and now we need to add melted butter on top of this. So it says just to dust the, like brush on some melted butter. And it says about one tablespoon of melted butter. And you just wanna brush it on the top here. And then we are going to cover this again and let it rest for another hour. Sourdough is all about letting things rest. <laughs> oh, our oven is reheated again. So we used the cast iron, which I should have thought and done the first time because I knew that was not going to be a good situation. Stephen is actually headed to a garage sale right now. Um, and I told him, can you look for some Pyrex dishes? <laughs> okay, let's let this rest and let's get that other bread in the oven. We're going to try this again. This time we have the cast siren in here, and we're gonna put one cup. Definitely creates steam. <laughs> okay, and let's get our bread in the oven. Add a little bit more. to do is we actually have to reduce the oven down to 425 and we need to cook that for 30 minutes. That cast siren wasn't really clean and I'm smelling, you know when you turn your furnace on for the very first time after it not being on for the winter? That's what I'm smelling. I'm hoping it doesn't go into the bread. Oh, oh well, I'll try it. I know for the future that that is what I'm gonna be using to make this because really, I, I think this recipe is fairly easy and I do apologize if I'm making it look a little harder than it is. It's just that these are the first time that I'm actually attempting to make these recipes. And in general, the first time that I'm even attempting to make a ciabatta bread or even this twisty bread. So we're learning together. <laughs> and so far, We've um, had a Pyrex dish explode on us, and that's it. So only one bad thing. So that's, I, I would say that it's going pretty well. So we'll let this cook for 30 minutes. The oven timer went off, so we're gonna check these. I looked a little bit with the light on, and it looks like they're done. Yeah, definitely done. All that thought, water evaporated also. So it says cook them until they're golden brown and then move them over to a cooling rack and let them rest for about an hour. Guys, these things, I'll show you. Hold on. Let me get them over here first. They are not pretty looking, but they are very like light and airy. Oh, I cannot wait to try these. So they have to rest an hour before we can bite into them, but I'm super happy with that. And I'm, this rise is amazing also. I'm gonna call that a win for the first time making that. Next time I'm definitely going to improve my kind of 
method of making them. So I think next time I make those, I am going to divide them into three parts because these are pretty big. I mean, that's good for at least a couple meals. I wanna experiment a little bit more with it. Um, so we're just gonna finish, I've got that other bread over there rising. We're just gonna wait for that to finish doing its rise and then we get to get that put in the oven. And that's the one that I'm really excited about trying because it's really new and the ginger snaps with the raspberry jam. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all meshes together and works. So. We'll let that finish up and then we'll come back and put that in the oven. Guess what time it is? It's time to get this in the oven. It has definitely puffed up really good. I had the oven preheating at 400 degrees. So what we're going to do now is we are going to bake the dough in the center rack for 20 to 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, we're gonna reduce the heat down to 350 and then we're gonna bake for about another 10 to 15 minutes. We got it set for 25 minutes. It says that this twist will puff up beautifully and turn a golden brown when it is ready. Some of the filling will be bubbling and caramelizing along the sides. Yum. It says once it's cooled, you can dust it with powdered sugar and top with some fresh raspberries. I wish we had fresh raspberries, but unfortunately we don't. We'll maybe have to make this again when it is raspberry season and we can like have a, we can make like a fresh raspberry sauce and put it on and then we'll have fresh raspberries. So stay tuned for that. I'm thinking that that sounds delicious. So it just says cut into slices and enjoy. So I will come back with you when we take it out of the oven. So again, I'm going to come back, reduce it to 350 and put it in for, or leave it in for another 10 minutes. So I'll come back once everything is finalized and we're actually taking it out of the oven. I actually wanted to come back before I take it out. I wanted to show you guys the inside of this, this uh, bread. I actually cut it open in over an hour, but look at the inside of that. It is absolutely delicious. I am so, so making this again. It is worth the extra amount of effort that it takes to make this. As you guys have seen with this video, these are not like the typical easy to make everyday sourdough breads. These are kind of more of a specialty bread, but it is so worth it this step. I really hope you guys give this a try. My, um, what I'm thinking to do with this is actually cut it lengthwise, like in half. So I have a bottom and a top and I'm gonna make a sheet pan egg. I'm gonna do this tomorrow morning for breakfast. I'm gonna make a sheet pan egg and I'm going to put that egg there and I'm gonna fry up some bacon and put that on and kind of make like a sandwich, put some cheese on, put it in the microwave, or put it in the oven and melt it. I might actually make a video. I might include that in my what's what we eat in a week video. I might. Anyways, I'm gonna go and finish enjoying this and wait for that to cook. My kitchen timer's re ready to go off. So let's get it out. It, it, it looks burnt, but it's really not that burnt. The camera makes it look like I charred it, but it's not super burnt. Excited. It doesn't say anything about waiting to eat it. I'm gonna get, actually get this on a cooling rack or attempt to get this on a cooling rack. Let's see if you can do that. There we go. It definitely did burn a little bit on here, um, but it looks like it burnt just where like the chocolate chips were. Um, and it could have been the butter that we put on it also. It does say that it will caramelize, but it really caramelized a lot. So. It smells really good though. We're going to let this rest a little bit and then we're gonna dust it with some powdered sugar and then we will taste it. But I am very much looking forward to this one. I cut into it, it is still definitely hot, but this is what it looks like inside of it. Let's just try a little tiny piece. I'm not gonna put any powdered sugar on it because it is already sweet enough with that raspberry jam and chocolate chips. You know what it reminds me of? It's really good. It reminds me of cinnamon rolls. 
Um, it definitely did burn a little bit, so I am going to be making this again without a doubt. It is really, really delicious. However, I'm going to put it in for 20 minutes at the 400 degrees and then instead of doing the 15 minutes I'll do the 10. I just automatically go for the longer cooking time because my oven takes a really long time to cook stuff for some reason like I think the heating thing is all wonky. I am really excited how this turned out. So I'm gonna end the video here with you guys because this is probably already a pretty long video with me taking you guys along on my learning experience on how to make these two delicious breads. Um, tonight's supper is just going to be, I think I've said this already, it's just gonna be a ground beef with just some canned pasta sauce and some noodles. And then we're gonna have some of that um, ciabatta bread. And then tomorrow, I am actually going to video it, but I am gonna make that egg sandwich for breakfast tomorrow that I was telling you guys about. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe, I'll greatly appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.